Uh, let's begin with our top story coming in from Pakistan has failed diplomatic efforts, threats of nuclear war and now reportedly a ballistic missile test. Imran Khan is on a desperate mission to draw international attention to Jammu and Kashmir and to satisfy the jihadi elements within his own country. Pakistan is now reportedly going to test its Ghaznavi surface-to-surface -surface missile from a flight test range in Balochistan. The test will be tracked at the National Development Complex Ground Control Station in Sindh. These tests are a last-ditch effort by Pakistan to try and internationalize Jammu and Kashmir, something it has failed to do multiple times over the last few weeks. Pakistan has closed its airspace from 28th August till the 31st, and now it seems clear as to why this decision was taken. The airspace closure was probably in light of the reported missile tests. Pakistan had issued a notice to airmen that the Son Miami base in Balochistan has been activated and all ships were asked to steer clear due to an incoming missile. Reports indicate that Pakistan had informed India about the missile tests on 26 August, three days prior to the testing, keeping with the confidence-building measures adopted between the two countries in 2005. Now, according to the agreement, both countries are supposed to inform each other about these missile tests three days prior to the actual testing. But the Indian government seems unperturbed by the possible missile tests. The tests have reportedly been attributed to the huge pressure on Imran Khan from anti-India elements within his country to take some sort of action. So the missile tests are nothing but a continuation of the Pakistan government's false call for help. Let's shift focus over to the United Kingdom where thousands of people have protested against plans to suspend the parliament across the country within hours of Boris Johnson announcing the plan. At Westminster, crowds blocked traffic and some held a sit-down at the parliament square chanting stop the coup while others headed for Downing Street. <laughs> there were impromptu demonstrations in Edinburgh. Cardiff, Manchester, Bristol, Cambridge and Durham after the Queen approved an order that will see Parliament suspended for more than a month. Thousands of people, including Shadow Home Minister Diane Abbott and left-wing columnist Owen Jones, gathered outside to make their voices heard. A series of other protests have been planned in major cities across the UK over the next couple of days. It comes as an online petition to stop Boris Johnson from proroguing the Parliament. That has hit nearly a million signatures with thousands signing it by the minute. Now, Britain might just be heading towards a no-deal Brexit. Here's what has triggered it. The UK Parliament has been suspended from the 12th of September to the 14th of October. The Parliament is currently in recess. Lawmakers will be returning to the Parliament in September, but days after they return to work, the Parliament will be suspended again. The House of Commons and the House of Lords has been provoked from the 12th of September till the 14th of October. This is happening at the request of British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. He requested the Queen to suspend the House. The Queen has now approved it. Now, does the Queen have the power to do this? This is one question and the answer is yes. The power to prorogue the House is the prerogative of the Royals. Johnson said that when the Parliament returns from the cess, it will open with the Queen's address. The Queen will use the occasion to declare the government's agenda. Johnson said that his government's agenda will be an exciting one. But there's more to the story than this. The need One needs to remember that the Brexit deadline is knocking at Britain's door and the UK is supposed to exit the European Union by 31st of October this year. The suspension of the country's Parliament at these desperate times is surprising to say the least. The prorogation leaves the lawmakers with no time to pass any law regarding Brexit. The lawmakers also cannot do anything to stop a no-deal Brexit. Once the House resumes, the lawmakers will have just 17 days before Brexit hits them. This will leave them paralyzed. Boris Johnson's decision to request for prorogation has angered a lot of British lawmakers. Some of his own party men too are not happy. Tory backbencher Dominic Grieve called the move an outrageous act. Grieve even warned that the move could lead to a vote of no confidence in Boris Johnson. US President Donald Trump had something to comment here. Now, Trump has tweeted that it would be very hard for Jeremy Corbyn to seek a no confidence vote against Johnson. He writes, and I quote, Boris is exactly what the UK has been looking for and will prove to be a great one. Now, British Speaker John Burkow said that the Prime Minister's move was a quote unquote constitutional outrage. He said that it was obvious that the move was designed to stop the parliament from debating Brexit. Opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn has called the move unacceptable. Listen in to what Corbyn had to tell. 
suspending Parliament is not acceptable, it's not on. What the Prime Minister is doing is a sort of smash and grab on our democracy in order to force through a no-deal exit from the European Union. What's he so afraid of that he needs to suspend Parliament to prevent Parliament discussing these matters? So when Parliament does meet on his timetable very briefly next week, the first thing we'll do is attempt legislation to prevent what he's doing, and secondly, we'll challenge him on a motion of confidence at some point. Now, the British Prime Minister has brushed aside all criticism. Johnson said that the prorogation was not being proposed to usher in a no-deal Brexit. He said he did not want to wait until after Brexit to take the country forward. Animals on charred earth, animals with nothing to eat, no water to drink. This is how the Amazon rainforest looks like right now. And the wildfires are not just restricted to Brazil anymore. The Amazon basin part of Bolivia is also burning. Dramatic aerial visuals show that the fires continue to burn unabated. Brazil and Bolivia have launched a firefighting initiative, but the efforts can only extinguish small blazes. Firefighters are struggling to contain fast-moving fires. Only rain can put out larger infernos. The situation is grim. Weather experts have predicted weak rainfall in Brazil this year. And by the way, the rainy season in the Amazon begins only in late September. The somber scene has scared the international community. The Amazon forest fire is an environmental crisis a man-made climate catastrophe. Forest fires in Brazil alone have surged by 85% this year. Brazil's space agency has registered over 80,000 fires just this year. It's the highest since data on fires were compiled. Forest fires are frequent during dry seasons, but the magnitude this year is alarming. We believe that the position of Brazilian President Bolsonaro is inciting the producers to start these fires. This type of criminal arson in the Amazon, it happens every year and we have not seen this type of fire before Bolsonaro. We think many mining companies and timber companies feel that Bolsonaro is supporting them in doing this. NASA's infrared satellite shows carbon monoxide at 18,000 feet above South America. If strong winds carry this plume of carbon monoxide to other parts, air quality will be hurt. These forest fires in Amazon will have an adverse impact not only on the eight countries in the Amazon basin, but the entire world. This catastrophe is threatening millions of species, and with it, the entire ecosystem. Hunted billion tons of carbon store in the Amazon forests. So if we lose the forests, and let's say even 50% of that carbon ends up in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, a very, very important, the most important greenhouse gas. A hundred billion tons of carbon dioxide. Five years of total emissions in the atmosphere is just one day. Vulnerable species may be threatened, even become extinct. And amidst the hues and cries from conservationists, Brazil's president wants to open up the Amazon for business. 25% of the world's forests are burning. This is an ecological equivalent of a genocide. Amazon is more than just a forest, it's a life source. Forest fires and climate change operate in a vicious cycle. With rising fires, the greenhouse gas emissions also rise. This in turn could increase the overall temperature of the planet and that increases the chances of extreme weather events. The United Nations says that the particulate matter and toxic gases released from the fires could have more dangerous repercussions in the long term. These forest fires could hurt the source of 6% of the world's oxygen. The Amazon's importance to global environment cannot be...